So this is a video for all about games. I screwed up last time, completely forgot this row. And because he liked the video and made a comment, even though it took me forever, because I never checked the video, not knowing that someone actually cared about it. So uh, this is for you, man. Okay, we're going to start off at the beginning. These are the Lego games for Vita. This is every Lego game physically for Vita in America. Lego Lord of the Rings, Lego Batman 2 and 3, Lego Chima of Oz Journey, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Lego Marvel Adventures, Lego Ninjago, two different versions, Lego Jurassic Park, Lego the Movie, the video game, Lego the Hobbit, Lego Harry Potter, and Lego Star Wars, which in my opinion is by far the best Lego game. The only Lego game on Vita that I have beat. And a few things about it is it follows the story very well of The Force Awakens. It does have bonus missions. You can go to different battles, like the Battle of Endor. You can play as uh, the Ewoks. Whatever his name is. The guy that attacks Leia in Return of the Jedi. There's also, a, you can be characters like uh, Wedge Antilles, the Emperor, Vader. There's in other Lego games, you gotta get the studs. To collect enough of them and unlock other characters. Now there's no free roam in this, which like in a Marvel Avengers there is. Now if you're gonna get a Lego game, get Marvel, Marvel the Avengers. If you're not gonna get Star Wars, that's the only other Lego game I beat. I really like that one. Well, I'm not that big of a Marvel fan, boy. There's still so many characters like the Hulk, Thor, Spidey. So many characters you can unlock and. It's a free roam game, so you can basically roam around the city and have some fun. Now, other than that, we're going to go up to Lego Little Big Planet. I'm not going to comment much on that because it's just not my cup of tea. I've tried that. I've tried getting into games like Minecraft. I just can't. Little Deviants came out, but the same time the Vita was released. It's like a kart racing game, but it's subpar and really not that good. It's so cheap. If you get it for a couple bucks, it might be worth it. Lost Dimension is a turn-based game, which I another game I beat. It's very good. Uh, what separates from other turn-based games is you're going to have a traitor in your midst. So every mission, not every single little mission, but during each chapter, which is divided into missions, there's going to be a traitor. So you got to figure out who the traitor is during each chapter. By reading into the things they say and studying them. Now it's always random so you can't do a walkthrough and figure out who exactly the traitor is. Besides the first mission. Which you can figure out who the traitor is. So really pay attention to that first min mission. If you like turn based strategy you'll have a ball with it. Moon Mines is uh, I call it breakout with music. It's alright if you like music games you might like it. Madden 13 graphics remind me of an upgraded PS2 game or a subpar Xbox 360 game. It does have a fantasy draft in it, which I love. And uh, it's the only football game on Vita, so if you like Madden or football whatsoever, you should buy it for Vita. I'd give it like a 7 out of 10. If you like old school Madden like gameplay, you'll like this. Now, Mio Labyrinth of Death is newer. Now there are not two different covers. The cover on that game is reversible. It's the only difference for that cover. Now I'm not into collecting every cover. I might get them if one's Canadian and one's American, but if they're not any different than that, I'm not going to do different covers. I just wanted to say that because when I saw the different cover at GameStop, I was confused. Then I looked inside and saw that it's just reversible. Now Metal Gear Solid HD Collection. It has the Metal Gear game, Metal Gear Solid 3, then has the other one, where you start off as Snake, you're on the boat, you beat the boat mission, and then BOOM! You're riding. And it sucks. Now keep in mind, I personally had forgotten about this, because I never played either of those Metal Gear games when I was a kid. I didn't like stealth action as a kid, it was more all about action, like Doom and World War II shooters like Medal of Honor. So I really didn't play Metal Gears. Now, however, though, if you're going to play this, if you're going to play a Vita, you got to have this game. It's a must-have for Vita. 
Because Metal Gear Solid 3 HD is so good. The graphics are updated. Everything in the game is there. It's just up updated and everything is just better in it. So long. So many hours you can put into it. If you played the PSP versions of it, Metal Gear, it's not going to be like Portable Ops. Where you have Fulton Recovery System. It's the old Metal Gear. The game, the uh, it's basically, it's just an HD port. But it's really, really well done in HD. So you gotta buy it just for Metal Gear Solid 3 and screw the other Metal Gear game on there. Now Minecraft, piece, PlayStation Vita edition. No game in there. Just a download voucher. Like I said in Little Big Planet, Minecraft is not my cup of tea. Mine Zero is like... Uh, what the hell is it called? Stranger of Soul City. I'm sorry, Stranger of Sword City in Demon Gaze. Games like that, Tokyo Abyss. It's games like that style with the 2D dungeon crawling type of game. If you like those games, you'll like Mind Zero. If you don't like those games, you won't like Mind Zero. So, moving on, Michael Jackson Experience. If you like Michael Jackson, you like music games, then get it. It's only like seven bucks. Cover is kind of hard to find. Other than that, I don't really have much to say. I'm not that big of a fan of Michael Jackson, so I've only played a couple songs. Now, I'm going to move up here on the list because I'm going to come back to the MLB games. Now, Mod Nation Racers is a kart racing game that's subpar. It's like a 6 out of 10. Basically, it's a dumbed-down Mario Kart. with a lot of customization. That was its big thing coming out, but it's not really any good. It's just a game if you're a collector to have. Mortal Kombat, on the other hand, is really pretty good. If you like Mortal Kombat games, you gotta have this one. It's got all the characters you can want. It's got Freddy Krueger as a bonus. You don't gotta download him, I don't think. He's in the game. You just, to unlock different things, you gotta do challenges, beat the game. Then there's a forest with trees, and each tree you knock down gives you a special thing, like Freddy Krueger, alternate tires. There's tons and tons to unlock, which is a thing that will keep you coming back for more. Now these three games are the three newest limited run games that I've got. Mutant Muds Deluxe is the top one. Mutant Muds Super Challenge is the bottom one. Now, Nova 111 the other limited run game that have come out. Right now I have all the limited run games that have been released for sale. Those are the newest games. And these are the top two games are two of the retail games that I've gotten from Amazon that are new. Tuki Din 2 is not like Tuki Din Kiwami or it's not like a DLC game they marketed as a whole new game. It's a completely new game, completely new monsters, and I haven't put that much time into it because I'm still playing War of the Lions. I'm at the final boss, and that's my favorite version of PS Vita series. Anyway, I haven't got into that yet, and Akiba's Beat I haven't got into either. The one thing I wanted to say about Akiba's Beat is this. This is a pre-order bonus. It's just a little plush I made in the other video, but that's what you get for a pre-order from Amazon for Akiba's Beat, and they didn't advertise it.